Okay, so we have to talk about the iPad girlies who probably left their iPad sitting around collecting dust or you just use it to like play Monopoly Go or just stream Netflix on it. Let's, let's, come on, come closer. Let's just come on and have a conversation and how to elevate your iPad usage. So if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, I am Myra. I am Notion Love and Slytherin. I do all things organization and cozy vibes over here. So if you guys are into that kind of thing, you will definitely enjoy this channel. My ultimate goal is to make Notion and tech just in general more easily to understand for the everyday person. Like most of us are not getting into the nitty gritty and the specs of everything. Like we just want to use what we love and use it to its fullest potential. So definitely don't want to miss out on any other videos here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and while you're at it, hit the like button as well because it really does help me out here in the YouTube streets. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get right into it. <laughs> Okay, so here is my iPad and let me know in the comments down below, like what is your main use for your iPad? Are you like a student and you're trying to use it for school? Is it something that you want to use as a parent to get more organized? Let me know in the comments down below. I love to chat more about that. Me personally, I use it a lot to stay organized. Um, I use it a lot for entertainment as well. Those are my two main things that I use my iPad for. And I'm gonna have to be honest with y'all. When I first got this thing, I definitely was not using it for its full potential. I definitely was the girly who will grab it because I didn't want to watch Netflix on my very small iPhone screen. So I would pick this up and I did not feel like setting up my TV or moving around to see the TV, you know, pure laziness. So I definitely was one of those persons. But it wasn't until I did these few things to just kind of elevate the experience on my iPad to make it a lot more useful for me. So first up, I have the Magic Keyboard case. It comes apart just like this. And um, this has a very huge kickback, which is very sturdy and holds it perfectly. This was absolutely a game changer for me. It is an investment. It is an investment, especially after you've spent like a couple hundred dollars on the iPad itself to have to then go in and spend one to two hundred dollars on a keyboard. I get it. I totally get it. But I am telling you, this thing literally changed my life. There are dupes and I'm sure there are other videos out there and, you know, information you get for dupes. I've tried all the dupes and I have to tell you, nothing compares to this magic keyboard. Like it instantly connects. I don't have to do anything to connect. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about Apple products. They just work seamlessly together that for me, just out of convenience, it's worth the price. But I also don't have to charge it. So that's a really good thing. Another thing with dupes for me, um, they were a bit bulky. This iPad is big. Like I said, I have the regular 10 inch iPad. It's already big. It's already kind of bulky. I don't need another case um, for the keyboard making it super bulky. But with this, it's pretty light. Like even the bottom part that comes off is pretty, it's pretty thin. I don't think it puts too much more bulk onto the iPad itself as like with dupes and other things, other accessories that I've used in the past. Um, for the most part, this is how I have my iPad. Um, I don't even take the, the keyboard with me everywhere. It's usually when I am either like when I'm storing it. So, you know, the face isn't exposed or it's when I'm like actually typing and journaling, organizing, using Notion, things like that is when I mainly have the keyboard. And I love the ease of having it separate. So if you want to watch a movie and you don't really need the keyboard there, you can just take it off, put it to the side, and it's not in your way. But like I said, I get it. It's definitely an um, investment. But when I tell you it is one that is worth it and will definitely take your iPad game to the next level, Trust me, go ahead and get it, just trust me. The next thing I did with my iPad that really elevated my game and really wanted me to come back to the iPad and use it time and time again was honestly just putting my personality onto the iPad. Well, that means like adding wallpapers, adding widgets, adding things that brought me life. I am a huge music buff. I love that I was able to find this widget that turned my music into like a vinyl, um, a vinyl record player kind of thing. You kind of see the record actually spinning as the music is playing. You get to see a little bit of the like um, music art attached to it, the name, the artist. You can also add to have like the 
active buttons to change the song directly from the widget. That is something that like really brings me joy and really is so beautiful for me to see. I also like created um, a bit of a scene with some digitals. These digitals and artwork that you see on my iPad actually came from a um, subscription that I had way back in the past and it they gave me um, the digitals to match that subscription. So I use that. You could definitely use like things from Pinterest, like just create a new board and get some vibes, get some moods of what you want. If you want it to be Disney, if Disney make you happy, if Harry Potter makes you happy, definitely build up a, um, go to Pinterest, look at different photos, build up a board and use that to decorate. Um, the little photos that you see here on my iPad actually comes from Widget Smith, which you can use to do like different calendars that you see um, on my board as well, or on my home screen as well. You can use it to like display photos. I know some of the like built in widgets that is with like iOS, they like cycle through photos, at least from my knowledge. Ever since I got Widget Smith, I haven't been back to the built in ones. Maybe it could be updated by now. But I didn't really want photos just to cycle through. I want it to be like a little bit of a art piece or a statement piece on my uh, home screen. So Widget Smith is absolutely perfect for that because you can set it up for just one photo. Um, also, I'm hearing and I want to add it to my uh, home screen here pretty soon is Pinterest has a really cool widget that can cycle through a board. So if you have like a vision board with different photos of things that you want to happen in your life to motivate you so you can see it every time that you come back to your iPad, definitely check that out and add that to your home screen. Like when I tell you, you take maybe an hour, hour and a half to really set it up and design it and make it look like something that you want to come back to, you're going to come back to it. Another thing that I started doing, particularly when I am browsing the web or doing like Notion or any other organizing things that requires like the actual internet, I actually download the Chrome extension or Chrome like web browser to my iPad because you can do that. Um, instead of using Safari, because, you know, I like Apple, but Safari just, y'all know, y'all know, it's not it. I prefer Google or check out, like, if you prefer, you know, Firefox or whatever. I'm sure they have an, um, an extension that you can add to your iPad so you can actually browse the web using their browser. That was a complete game changer for me. Instead of using apps, most of the time, most of the time, this does not apply to all apps. Like for instance, Netflix, I think Netflix has an amazing app on iPad and I use that when I watch Netflix, but certain apps are just blown up version of the iPhone app. So it doesn't really give you much first functionality. Um, since it is like more of a blown up version than the iPhone app, it acts as an iPhone app, meaning like you know, there's some watered down features. There's things that like if you were on a desktop or a laptop, you necessarily wouldn't be able to do on um, your iPhone. And a lot of iPad apps are like that. They just resize it to fit the iPad instead of creating something for the iPad. So I particularly like to use Google Chrome to actually browse different websites. I use that to do things on Canva. Um, there's a lot of features that you cannot do on Kemba mobile app, and it is the same for the iPad app that you can do on the desktop. But when you use a browser on your iPad, you can get those features that you typically use on the desktop. And the same for Notion. I just love the interface of how it looks on um, the web browser versus the actual iPad app. So yeah, if you are like downloading different apps and just not feeling the vibe of it, I know there is some apps that um, you could download on the iPad, but it's, you know, it still has the ratio of an iPhone. So yeah, definitely try that out. If that's something that you have been noticing uh, with certain apps, just don't like the way it works, or you feel like you're not getting real full functionality that you should have with a bigger screen, definitely try to do certain things on um, the web browser versus doing it via their app version. Another thing that has just taken my iPad um, usage to the next level is allowing myself to game on it. This was something that was completely new to me. Um, as if you've been following my journey over on Instagram, which you definitely should be following me over there. I do a lot more um, 
in the moment kind of thing. So if you want to keep up with me, that is the best place to keep up with me. Um, you know that I have recently gotten into like cozy type of gaming. Um, I really jumped into this when Animal Crossing came out back in 2020 and I have gone downhill from there. And I have recently found out that you can do like remote play with Xbox. So um, I actually played Disney Dreamlight Valley on my iPad. Um, there is some really good mobile games out right now that's giving cozy vibe. Right now I am in a chokehold with good pizza, great pizza. I love that I'm on like day like 29 or something like that. Like I... It, it's real like I'm I'm deep in it and the gaming experience has been pretty good I really enjoy um playing games on there and being able to have kind of like that switch vibe with something small and compact but having a little bit of a you know a slightly bigger screen not big enough as a computer screen not a tv screen but you you know it's kind of that middle ground there because what I really love about the switch is that I can be in bed and playing and now I can do that with my iPad I can be in bed and playing um your controller connects perfectly with Bluetooth, whether you use like a Switch controller or an Xbox controller. Um, with good pizza, great pizza, I use my Apple Pencil to like add toppings to my pizza and stuff like that. It has really been a game changer and it is not something that I thought that I would be using my iPad for, but... I am. So there you have it guys. Those are some really fun ideas on how to elevate your iPad and get you using it more than just for one thing or just get you using it in general. Let's not let our iPads collect dust. They cost a lot of money and you got it for a reason. So let's go ahead and get to using it. Let me know down below if you would like even more tips or what you would like to see with any like iPad content. I love mine. I adore it. And I just want to see people doing it a lot more. I think a lot of folks picked it up maybe for journaling or digital planning or, you know, needed something to play Netflix with and just really don't tap into that full potential of what the iPad can do. So I definitely would love to do more videos, but let me know what you would like to see. If you want to check out more of my very cozy vibes kind of videos, these are going to be some good options for you. And of course, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.